When I was arrested, I was facing life in prison. I got a lot of questions. What did I listen to? Not the nicest sound. Keys rattling, cell doors banging, guards shouting, the noise of fights breaking out, alarms ringing, the madness of solitary confinement. Here are the top five songs that saved my life while in prison. This first part is the emotional anchor. I'm gonna talk about a song, uh, how it resonated with me in prison and why it helped me through sometimes tough times because music did help me through some tough times. We had a transistor radio with a pair of headphones. Literally cost a hundred bucks and that's what we had. Well, I'll tell you the first song that really resonated with me was a Paul Simon. Paul Simon is one of my greatest artists, period. And uh, I used to sit and listen to 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. Now, I know that sounds like, what do you mean? You're in prison, you want a lover. In fact, I didn't want one. I didn't want my wife. I was married at the time. I didn't want her to have to wait for me and do things. He's young. You got to remember my wife at the time was 12 years younger than me. I went to prison at 34 years old. She was 22 years old. And I'm going to ask a 22-year-old woman to stick with me. Now, we, we were friends. I didn't say it didn't hurt. I didn't say everything. We're still great friends to this minute. And what I thought did was... I used to sit and listen to 50 Ways, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, Get On The Bus, yeah. the whole works, the song, I can start singing that song, I love that. Slip out the back, Jack, make a new play and say, just listen to me, get on the bus. Hop on the bus, Gus, you don't need to discuss much, just drop off the candy. Yes. Anyway, and that song came out in 1975 on his fourth album. It was really one of his good songs. And uh, it was just, it was, the, the song was just really, it was, a, I don't know. And I would be on the East Yard. My first prison, real prison, where I, I had to stay for a long time was Atlanta, USP Atlanta. And I would work the East Yard. First I worked in the kitchen with the, the wise guys. And then I worked the East Yard to help smuggle stuff back and through the metal detectors and stuff. But I... In downtime, I'd literally sit there and, and, and listen to my headphones. And and it was it was a big, big thing to have those headphones. And you don't realize, I'm not a music guy, guys. I'm the first to admit. I am no Juice World. I love uh, T Grizzly. I love Frank Sinatra. I love a lot of different songs. I'm so non-musically inclined. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. But I love music because it really takes you away from wherever you're at. And I think that's really important. So that's, you know, like I said, you want to know my song? That is the emotional stuff. And you'd get emotional. Don't think your eyes went in water or whatever you're thinking about. Literally leaving your lover. But they were always there for me. I was very lucky. Some people had nobody. I had a lot of people. And I am very lucky about that. Okay, they asked me, great question, what songs connected me to the outside world, and this is what I'm going to resonate with you, is uh, another Paul Simon song. Now, not all Paul Simon songs, but this is another one. As you know, I think people who do know me know my favorite artist is Paul Simon of all time. I mean, I love Frank Sinatra and Elton John and Billy Joel, a zillion Leonard Skinner, but song-wise, uh, Kodachrome. And I'll tell you why. The opening of Kodachrome about all this crap we learned in high school. And it's so true. There is so much stuff that we've learned in high school, guys, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I believe in school in a big way for the interaction you have with young people of, of different socioeconomic backgrounds, different races or whatever. So I'm a believer in, in school. I'm not a believer in homeschool, just to let you know. Uh, but that's up to everybody. And there are great homeschools that can take kids and, and bring them to a lot of events and stuff like that. But school to me was great. And Kodachrome. Now, I want you guys, I hope you guys actually listen to a little of these songs. Uh, I think, you know, oh, man, I love Kodachrome. And, you know, a lot of young people listening to this video, probably watch this video, don't know what Kodachrome is. And it's about a, a camera, a Kodachrome camera. And, you know, he loved to take photographs. And the song was just, you guys don't know. Today, it's all on your phone. 
we actually had to have a camera. There was no phones to begin with. So we had to do that. So that, that's pretty wild. And Kodachrome was a song that it would, I loved the song, but it would connect me to the outside world of school and whatever. And I would walk the track a lot of times. That was like a big time walk the track, feel good about things. Uh, before a visit, I used to like to listen. But you know, here's another thing you couldn't do. You had to find out when your artist was on the radio. We didn't have a, uh, what's it called? A uh, MP3 player. We didn't have a tape player. We didn't have a phone with all of this music downloaded. We didn't have that. You had to find a station, listen to those songs, and you'd almost know that, you know, that, that station's going to play that song. It's going to be really good. And that happened all the time, guys. I mean, I would love it. I know what artists are coming on during the day, and I'll talk about that uh, on the next one. But that's pretty wild. But music has helped me a lot, too. The next one, good question. What gave me a glimpse of hope? That's a great question. Well, I'll tell you what song, because this is all about songs, gave me a glimpse of hope. That's life. I know you guys don't know that song. Uh, that Life was by Frank Sinatra. Well, That Life was actually by somebody, not Frank Sinatra. It was, it was actually done by, I think, a guy named uh, Marquis Francos, or was it Francos or another guy, uh, a French guy, uh, Jacques something. But it was made in 1963, came out in 1966. A lot of artists, a lot of artists uh, did that. It was a cover song. Frank Sinatra made it famous in 1966, three years after it came out. And to this day, if you listen to That's Life. Oh, and cry. That's life. That's all. I mean, it's just so empowering. That, oh man, you know, that's life, man. It made me really think about my life of all the bad I did too and come to grips with that. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I don't like to be proud of the crimes I committed, uh, but I did what I did. I can't also live a life of, oh, I'm a hated person all the time as well. Uh, people are never going to forgive me and that, that's whatever. I'm, there's people I'll never forgive for a lot of things. Uh, and I get that. I really do. And I'm... Listen, that's life. <laughs> There's the song. That's life. Frank Sinatra. If you don't like Frank Sinatra, man, I don't know. Frank Sinatra, to me, uh, had one of the best voices, period. Period, ever. There's three artists I personally believe had the three best voices in all of singing. And you're going to be crazy when you think about them. And I'll tell you who they are. Frank Sinatra, Bette Midler, and... Uh, Maybe Donna Summers. I mean, she had just an amazing voice. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Streisand had an amazing, amazing voice. But, uh, yeah, I would have to say that. I, I, I'm probably going to go with one other one. This is mine. Natalie Cole. She does a, a remake with her father, Nat King Cole. That was just, you have to listen to it. You just have to listen to it. Her best songs as well. All right. Another great question, you know, to reflect on the past, you know, again, I always think of songs that, that, that jumped out at me. And again, that's a Frank Sinatra song. And that's my way. I did it my way. Regrets, I have a few. But then again, too few to mention. Oh boy, do I suck at singing. But... That came out in 1967 by the Claude guy. The other one was by Montgomery. But this guy, Claude Francos, actually wrote the song in 1967. And Frank Sinatra made it famous in 1969. You'd have met one. I actually remember that. That's crazy. But uh, my way. I could be anywhere. Anywhere. And hear that song and I stop. And I think. All of these songs I'm talking about right here. Oh, songs that make me uh, stop and think. And I'll tell you what, not only do they make me stop and think those songs, I used to listen to Frank Sinatra every Sunday from noon to 4 p.m. 
He was on the radio in Atlanta, and I was I used to actually listen to him with a guy named a gangster named Patty Amato, who was a a, a, a made guy with uh, Vic Arena his crew. Patty Amato, uh, he passed since, but he's a good guy. Him and I would sit on the bleachers and listen to Frank Sinatra. Boy, did I love it too, man. I did it, and all the greats. But my life, you know, that's life in my way. Of course, New York. Everyone said, "Larry, do you love New York?" New York. So yeah, but. I'm talking about relating to the questions you guys are answering. These songs jump at me in a big way. They really do. And and I'll tell you what. It's songs that they're embedded. And I want you guys to listen to them. I do. Because they are all over the place. And, and you're seeing that now. So let me go to number five. You know, great question. The Road to Redemption. I talk about redemption all the time. But you can't have true redemption without forgiving yourself. Can't. I mean, you can walk around that guilt guilt place. You can't do that. You can't live life that. So there's two songs, actually two, and I'm going to mention them both. They're both by the same artist. They're both by uh, Alaba- uh, Al- Sweet Home Alabama by uh, Leonard Ooh. Skinner. So that came out, I think, in 1975. I think it's 75. Leonard Skinner, the first one. Oh, it's got coming home for you. Was uh, 73, maybe. I think the first one is Freebird. Now, Freebird's a long song, but listening to those words just blow you away. And you, and you can't, you can't. Leonard Skinner has that voice. And I'll tell you another wa- reason why Leonard Skinner really touches me. Uh, and, and the song is Sweet Home Alabama. No, I'm not from Alabama. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I'm from New York. Uh, but Sweet Home Alabama, I got to learn on the piano in a couple of days by a guy named Bobby S. Damien. Bobby since passed, but Bobby was a concert pianist, pianist in Carnegie Hall at seven years old. Ended up going to prison. He got a 20-year sentence for drugs. Unbelievable what he would do. We He would play for, and I, and I met Bobby in Coleman Prison, and I, he actually played the piano for all the bands. When I say bands, like the church band, like the reggae's had, you know, uh, the Rastafarians had their own church thing and they had music. The Catholics did, the Christians did. Did the Muslims did the Jews did, and Bobby would literally play the piano for all of them, and they had a music room in Coleman at the time. So I'd go down there with him, and I said, Bobby, I want to learn how to play "Sweet Home Alabama" and "Old Anxiety." Old Anxiety is dun 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 dun. That's "Old Anxiety" was the New Year's song, and it was near New Year's. It was a December sometime, and I said, I want to play that song with two hands. Because I used to sit and watch it. Like, I used to say to Bobby, can you play a song? And he'd go, what's the name of it? And I go, I don't know. He goes, hum it. And I'd go, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. He'd stop playing it. It was, it was amazing. This guy's brain worked differently. And, and this is the funny part, guys. He had narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is where I'm sitting playing. He's teaching me how to play. He's next to me. He's doing this. He would fall asleep, literally just, I go, Bobby, I got it, Bobby. Hit him, and uh uh-huh. It's funny as hell, but Bobby passed away in prison. Uh, he, I got to know him so well. His dad used to visit Coleman with my dad, and they'd come in together, <coughs> and uh, we'd sit at the visiting room at that time. Uh, Bobby as Damien, and uh, what a jolly heavy, he was big. Heavy, but the funnest guy you ever want to meet. I think whenever I hear a piano playing, whenever, I think of Bobby. Well, that that and Sweet Home Alabama. I said, Bobby, I want to play this song. It's Sweet Home, and it's C, D, F, and G. I actually know the keys. Sweet C, D, F, and G. And I had that down to two songs. Two songs I played with two hands, guys, in a couple of days. Now I can't. I'm not ma- mechanically inclined. But that's the songs that gave me a lot of uh, redemption. And it just it made me feel good because of the people there. People make mistakes. 
Alabama, or uh, Freebird. You got to forgive yourself all that. So that one. Ah, bonus question, huh? Uh, good question. I like that question. The songs that made me sad or the songs that I listened to made me almost cry is usually after somebody passed away in prison. You know, I'd hear Candle in the Wind by Elton John. Elton John brought that emotion. He was so good at that song. You know, you delight and you see it. And he made it, you know, it was about Norma Jean. Norma Jean was Marilyn Monroe, actually. And he actually did a remake of that song for, because that song came out in, I think, 1973. Uh, Elton John's song came out with, uh, it was about Marilyn Monroe. It's called Candle in the Wind. But he made a remake of that song when Princess Diana died. And it was all of, actually sang that at, in, in Westminster Abbey and in, in, in the cathedral and all of that. Pretty wild. He's amazing. And that song, if somebody passed away in our prison and we knew it or something happened, if I ever heard that song, and I did it a lot, you'd, you'd like, you know, it hit you, you know, because you just start thinking about that. So it was about, a, to me, it was because of that song with uh, Princess Diane, but it, it, you just thought that way. That's just the way you did it. And I did. Candle in the Wind would do that. So I, I think that's pretty good. But uh, now you know, guys. Now you know all my uh, my songs and what they mean to me. And I am, as you can see, all over the place. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. See you next time.